David Seymour. Oh, Mr Speaker, I thank the member for the long list of dad jokes, uh, if only he had the bod to go with it. Uh, but Mr Speaker, I am proud to stand in a New Zealand strong and free. In the third freest economy in the world, we are a country that are leaving in and committed to free trade. We are a company that should be much more open to foreign direct investment. We are such a country, I correct myself. We are, as a result of being a country with free markets, a country largely with free minds, diverse, tolerant and harmonious. And I wonder uh, what Jacinda Ardern really thinks about her party's recent shaking of the race tree in the last few weeks. We are a country of strong civil liberties. We are doing so well in the global economy against that backdrop of sound public policy. But having benefited from that, we should also be committed to relentlessly and continuously improving our public policy environment. And when we turn to the agenda of the current government, we see a mixed bag. The government wants to introduce tax holidays for companies that are doing a certain amount of R&D measured by labour, that are companies of a certain size domiciled in a certain place, and frankly by the time you attempt to administer and comply with that policy, it would be cheaper to take a helicopter filled with money uh, equivalent to the administration and, compli and compliance costs and drop it over some area that might be beneficially filled with R&D, because that would be more efficient than what they're proposing. What the government should be doing is saying that we will devote $120 million a year of new spending, of which there is over a billion each year, and saying we will commit to dropping the company tax rate because we recognise that New Zealand has comparatively high taxes on capital and the OECD, even after you consider the imputation credits that New Zealand has. That's what the government should be doing. It would be simple, it would be effective, and it would send a message that we wish to attract investment in foreign capital uh, to New Zealand. Uh, the government uh, is caving somewhat to the foreign buyer mentioned uh, the, the foreign buyer pressure aforementioned uh, from the Labour Party and introducing uh, a new bright line tax for tech, uh, a new bright line test for taxes and an effective foreign buyer register. What the government should be doing, rather than caving to those basis instincts from the opposition, uh, is reforming land use regulation that is demonstrably the cause of overly expensive housing across the OECD. We should be taking away uh, the bubble, taking away the constraints that have led to so much concern around foreign ownership, rather than introducing an additional layer of regulation that will be nearly impossible to enforce. Uh, and so the theme continues. The government is having a referendum on changing the flag. And I have to say, I have still not seen a candidate flag that I can really get excited about. And I suspect uh, that unless somebody else, or at least a large portion of New Zealanders, do very soon, there will be no change. What the government should be doing is having a referendum on an issue that is also requiring of cross-party support that will be with us for a long period of time uh, and that no one party will be able to lead on. And that is making superannuation sustainable for future generations of New Zealanders. As current university students retire, we will no longer have five workers retire per retiree, uh, but only two workers per retiree. But there's one last thing, Mr Speaker, that the government should be doing politically, legally and ethically, and that is legislating on assisted dying. It is politically the right thing to do because when you're in a democracy and 70% of people want something, you should do it. It is legally the right thing to do because the High Court has said that Parliament must act on assisted dying legislation. And it is ethically the right thing to do because, as the Canadian Supreme Court has said, it is a cruel choice to leave somebody in egregious suffering from an irredeemable condition, to either wait until they die naturally and painfully, 
or attempt to take their own lives in solitude. And I leave the House with that thought. Thank you, Mr Speaker.